Hey everyone, Eric with Rocket Nation, the Diecast Lab. Guess what? Today we are going to continue working on our four door Peterbilt build. And it's been a little while since we've been together because I've had a couple of toy shows I went to. And then, um, what else? Uh, well, life has just been full lately, on the weekends anyway. So I haven't been able to get back to this and then uh, get you guys uh, some lessons on how to continue building these two different cabs. Anywho, so that's what we're going to work on. But before we get to that, we got about three minutes before one o'clock, so we're just going to go ahead and let the crowd get gathered in. We'll let you two notify everybody we're live, and then we will get to a Kraken. We have Gitlin Farms. Good to see you. Welcome. Thanks for showing up. Um, yeah, so been a little bit of work on the four door since you guys, uh, since we've been last uh, got together. Basically, all I've done is some sanding and I primed. I need to do just a little more body filler because um, got a couple spots that look weird. But other than that, they're really coming along pretty decent. One other thing that you guys might be thinking about, and I'd love for you to leave some comments in the comment box or down below, is to tell me what colors do we want these things and what kind of service bed. LJ says, how's it going, Eric? And it is going well. Thanks for asking. I hope everything's well in your world. Um, so we need color schemes. And um, if you go to rockethfarmtoys.com, look in my store under the service bed section. Those are all the service beds I offer. What I'd love to know is, which bed should I put on these two bad boys? And there's one bed that's not listed that is coming. I've done one prototype of it, and it is the same bed uh, that is on Frederick Harvesting's uh, uh, T-800 service truck. They got a tandem axle service truck, uh, service bed on T-800. They only have one, and I've made that exact bed for them, actually. I'm going to do a replica of their service truck for Lance and crew. So I had that bed 3D printed. I've only done one so far. Uh, but anyway, long story short, that bed is coming. And I'm definitely going to use one of those just because it's new. But then I have one other bed that I would love to use, and you guys can pick it up for me. So go to my store, rockinhfarmtoys.com, look in service beds in the store. And then uh, those are all the ones I offer at the moment. So probably all the ones I'll can... Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do too many more of those. You can only have so many service beds, right? Anyway, so colors and service bed. Which one? And then we'll make these trucks based off that. So, um, yeah. And let me see. Got another minute here. Excuse me just a second. Got to keep a, I keep a roll of Kleenex out here. Never fails. Go live and then you gotta blow your nose. That's the way it works, isn't it? Sometimes. All right. So it is 12:59 here in Dodge City, Kansas, and I think it's just close enough. Why don't we get going? So, hey everyone, Eric with Rock and H Farm Toys and Rock and H TV plus the Diecast Lab, and today we're going to continue lesson three of our uh, four-door Peterbilt build. So I'm going to show you just a little bit of where we're at, give you just a brief history of what we're doing, and then we'll get to work. And we had one comment come in. Let's take a look at that quick. LJ says, would be cool to see a two-tone, two-tone one, decals, or paint would be sweet. Great, LJ. If you've got an idea of what it is you'd like to see, maybe you've seen something out in the world, let me know, and we'll take a look at it. The idea that this truck was based off of is out in Burlington, Colorado, uh, I forget the name of the harvest company, but it's in the uh, thumbnail they use for this series. Um, that service, that custom harvester had two 359 service trucks that are four door Peterbilts that he made in the shop. And then uh, one of them got sold to another harvester, which has then been sold again. And then I actually went to his shop and took photos of the one of the 359. Uh, the service bed is white, the cab is red and blue. Uh, red, white, and blue, huh? And um, so that was the inspiration for the series. That and I like making diecast four doors just because I find them satisfying to make. And I've never done a peek. So guess what? We're going to do this. Ah, very good. Jordan says he's made some progress on his T800. He sent me pictures of. Glad to hear that. 
Love it when people are making cool things. All right. So let's get a brief uh, idea of where we're at. So this one is called practice, and I always make one that I call practice because uh, I got to learn how to do this. So if you're new to making diecast things, I always recommend people make a practice model so you learn uh, how to do stuff and then make one you're going to keep. A second, there we go. Now you can see. So this one is practice. And where we left this last time, whoops, I'll just take it out. Where we left this one last time is, you can see here, um, boy, I'm just kind of all sorts of a, there we go. Now you can see. Um, we've primed this again, so it kind of re shows any flaws or defects in the model. Uh, we've come in here with an X-Acto knife, cleaned out these lines right here. That one didn't come out very clean, but that's an indentation. Not sure what to do about that. I don't know if that's a pinhole or what. Um, but the uh, cab lines up here are really nice and clean. I think I'm going to, I mean, I don't think we need to do anything more there. Those are pretty nice and tight. And then over here, got one where uh, I was cleaning this out like so, and some of the body filler kind of flaked out. Other than this little blim right here, uh, probably need to clean this out just a wee bit more to, to maybe make that all look like one, which we'll do here in just a sec. Um, this one, I think, is, for being practiced, I think this one's pretty darn close to being ready to paint. You know, as, I've, as I teach, um, I always, if guys doing something brand new that you've never done before, I always recommend give me one practice, learning how to do it, give it away, or sell it on eBay or something for a, whatever you can get out of it. Why well, it's just not coming out. And then make another one that you're going to keep that way. Huh, that's not coming out very well. Hmm. Not sure why it's not coming out very well, but it is, and maybe I need to be a little more aggressive. Hmm. But this is why you make a practice model. That way you can learn and make mistakes on one, get rid of it, and then have a nice one when you're all done. Hmm. I'm wondering if that's not um, like JB Weld in there that's not coming out, which is possible. Okay, well, we'll leave that one for now. Now we'll take a look at, this one is not practice. This is the one I'm intending to keep or uh, otherwise put on the shelf. And so where we left this last time, in lesson two, I had, put in, I had taken some body filler and put body filler over the top, down the side, and kind of left, left it dry. And then what I've done uh, right before we went live here, I sanded everything down again and then primed it so the primer would reveal any weirdness that may have that is now revealed since it's all one color. And you can see here, there's just a, a kind of a an odd bloom here. And this post right here is depressed in, is pressed in for some reason. I'm not sure how that happened. That's weird. I think it's a flaw in the die cast, actually. So this line right here and here are not lining up very well. Uh, not the end of the world. Uh, maybe a tiny blem right here, or maybe I could hit that with a bit of fine sandpaper and smooth that up. And then let's go to the driver's side. Um, when I was sanding on this side, I removed some of the detail from the die cast just by the sanding action. So this side isn't quite as nice as the passenger. 
and then cutting out this uh, seam. It's not a seam. What is it? I don't even know. There's a line right here that shows you uh, where the door would hinge. And then we've kind of lost this line up here where the door would be uh, meeting the top of the cab, kind of like this. We've lost that here. You would have to decide, do you want to go back through and maybe cut that in with a knife or how you'd want to handle that? I think I'm going to just, I don't know. Part of me wants to leave it just because that is kind of nice and smooth. We just don't have that line there. On top of the cab here, I do. I am going to put a little more Bondo body paste here because uh, in the sanding action, some of it flaked out right there, and I can feel a ridge. I don't like that. And then this hole right here, for some reason, did not fill in. Look at that. I just pushed that out. So we'll go ahead and do one more bit of body filler right there. Okay. And then um, the final thing we'll do today is I do need to make, I got this big old hole back here, right? So we do need to go ahead and cut a piece of styrene to go in this big insert. You can actually buy cab inserts if you were inclined. But I don't have one and don't really want to wait around for shipping. And you know, some guys maybe can't afford to buy uh, every little thing they need, so we'll just make one. And then everyone could get what they want. There we go. I think that is okay. Let's leave that chill out right there. Styrene bin. So I always keep two bins full of just odds and ends plastic. Sometimes you just need a little piece for this or that. Rather than having to cut up a whole sheet of stuff, I just keep these around. They don't really up my room. Oh, look at that. That's going to work. I couldn't even tell you what thickness this is because it's scrap and it fits the hole, so we're going to use it. So that's of no consequence to me how thick it is. Let's see, I got just a little bit of JB Weld here that's kind of gibbery. So we're cutting that out. Going to make ourselves a nice little spot here. There. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how big this is going to have to be. All right, so there's probably better ways to do this, like measuring the actual hole, which I think is going to be the smart way on this one. So let's just get a, we got it, what, that's five eighths there? Okay, so we need about five eighths by, oh boy, 15 sixteenths almost. And it looks like I have a straight line here and a straight line there, so we'll just measure this. So we need that 15 sixteenths. And five eighths. Whoops. And if you cut it a little big, that's okay, because guess what? You can always make it smaller. OK. 
Okay, Let's see how we did. Now it's not gonna fit because we have curved corners and it's still a little oversized, that's all right. We can always make it smaller, but we can't make it bigger. Okay. So it's just a piece of scrap. Sandpaper, no worries. Now regarding this piece of plastic, I'm not going to get too carried away making this 100% perfect. And why might you ask? Because a service bed is going to cover it up and you're not going to see it. Well, I should say, depending on which service bed we're going to use, it will be covered up and no one will see it anyway. So I'm not going to get too carried away making it a precision piece of plastic. Okay, let's see. Maybe just work just a little bit more on this part right here. Yeah, we're close, but not close enough. Oh, there we go. I think that went in. Ha! It works. Well, perfect. Okay. That's what we want, mate. All right. So I'm using Max Cure Extra Thick to glue this in place, putting glue on the inside. Farmer Dave is here. Good to see you, Farmer Dave. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll put a little bit more over here. I'm using like way, way, way too much glue for this particular project, but don't sweat it. It's good because it's on the inside, remember? So we're not too carried away. We're not too worried. Michael's here and he says, nice work. Thank you so much, Michael. Appreciate the shout out. Okay, we're just going to leave that like so and let it chill. Again, Excuse me, depending on what kind of a service bed you're going to use on this or, or whatever purpose you, you use this. I mean, let's say you put a, a box van on the back of this. Uh, a box, you know, some sort of van body on the back of this will cover up that entire piece. So you can take this however extreme you wish as far as um, the amount of perfection you want in it. I've seen some guys, they leave no stone left unturned when they go ahead and make a die cast model. That would include all the parts that are obvious and all the parts that are not obvious that go to a lot of effort to make perfect because, you know, some guys say, yeah, I know no one will see this, but I know it's there, right? So it's going to bug me if it's not perfect. Well, I don't know who you are and how you uh, approach things, but when it comes to these kinds of things, I normally, especially if it's on something I'm keeping for myself, if I know no one's going to look at it and I, or no one can see it, I will normally uh, take a shortcut and just get it really nice, really close, and then leave a few little details undone. Oh, 
Okay, so all I've done here is I put the plastic in, I put some body filler in just to kind of clean it up and give it a nice surface. Uh, I don't care about a window on this because again, the surface body I intend to use is going to cover that whole thing up anyway. So your driver will not be able to see out that back glass. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing there. Clean up my knife. And then um, we are going to switch hands here. And we're going to do just a little bit of work right here. I noticed that looks kind of crappy right there. There we go. There. That's clean. What I'm doing here is I'm just removing some body filler that I kind of smeared off and did, um, or smeared in some different parts. I'm just kind of cleaning those out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then sometimes that body filler, see these little rivets here? It'll get in those rivets, and then until you kind of prime it and pay attention, you won't maybe see it necessarily. Okay, so this is practice, and then he's going to chill. That's it. That's what I got for you right now, guys. Um, so we got to wait for body filler to dry on this one, body filler to dry on that, and then I'll make a, uh, another end cap there when you guys aren't looking, because that's okay. If you don't, you've seen one, you've seen them both. Um, you could, if you wanted to, cut out a piece of plastic with a window as you wish. Again, some of these little details you have to decide uh, how extreme or how close to reality you want to go. So, but with what I've shown you thus far, you have enough, uh, if you take these skills that I've showed you so far and put them into place, you have enough to kind of get you to the next level. You can do this one project, make sure you name one practice, go ahead and put one together, and then learn everything that I've showed you so far, and then if you want to take and add even more detail or make it even more original, then you can do that after you've kind of built up your skill set. <clears throat> okay, so that's that. I'm just going to take a quick look for any comments and see where we're at. Um, okay. Gitlin Farm says, neighbor bias has a four-door Kenmore 3900 and a four-door P3. Oh, wow, cool. All right. There are some other ones um, that I'd love to build, like a 579 four-door and a T800 four-door because I've seen both in real life and they were pretty cool looking, I thought. Um, uh, which harvester has that those two trucks? That would be, um, oh shoot, I don't recall their name. Anyway, um, but there's a har custom harvester that has a four-door 579 and a four-door T800 super long truck. Must take them two acres to turn that thing, but it's cool. Uh, yeah. So, love to do more of these as we get going. So, uh, for homework, for those of you that might watch this, one, tell me what color scheme to put on one of these trucks, and then what service bed to put on one of the trucks. I'm going to use a Frederick Harvesting uh, service body on one of them because uh, it's a brand new product for me, and I want to just put it in place because they're kind of cool. And so you guys get to choose the other one, the second one. Awesome. So what we're going to do next then, I'm going to shut the live stream off and then I'm going to come back on with another lesson. I have yet to mess with one of these right here. Uh, this is a uh, 359Pete. I've never messed with one of these. And I've got a guy that wants me to take this and put a 48 inch, buck, 48 inch uh, bunk on it and then do some pretty cool graphics that I've never done, or a paint scheme that I've never done, and it looks really hard, but I want to give it a go and learn how to do it. So that's what we're going to do next. Awesome. All right, then. I'll shut it off now, and then I'm going to come back on right after that, and we'll do the 359 teardown. So first for me. All right. Uh, before we go, if you've not subscribed to the Diecast Lab, slick... Uh, slick 
Go right on over there to the diecastlab.com and subscribe to my membership site. On that site, you have all the videos in, in series and kind of in a logical sequence and categories and things and other resources to help you bypass the learning curve of this diecast business, especially diecast trucks, because there's just a lot to learn and you can fast track all the way to uh, going from not knowing much to knowing a lot in a hurry. So check that out and then I will see you in a few minutes.